Hello, my friends. How are you? This is me, Dr. Sergio Rovensky from Shoulder Planet here from Sao Paulo, Brazil. In this video, I'm presenting you actually a lecture that I have presented on 4th April 2020 in Gujarat Orthopedic Association webinar on biological fixation on humeral fractures. It was a nice lecture showing indications of AVP anterior bridge plating of the humerus, a lot of uh, technical tips, tricks, and a lot of ideas and concepts to understand how the patient is uh, evolving clinically and radiographically when you use this technique. So I hope you like the video. Please subscribe, give your thumbs up, and let's see this nice lecture. Okay. okay. Sir, yeah. okay, now we'll move to the Sergio's lecture so yeah. that again we'll have a question answer session later on. Sergio, please, uh, you can start. Can sharing. I start? Yeah, yeah, yes, can sir. I start? Yes, yes, sir. So, are you seeing my presentation? Yes, yeah. Yeah, we are seeing your presentation, humor anterior bridge splitting. Okay, so I'm going to start. The thing is, uh, I'm super uh, happy, honored to be here. Uh, I'm very happy. The thing is, I made a presentation with, uh, in which I want to show a lot of comments, uh, uh, a lot of principles, and for the audience to understand how this technique works in different ages and in, di in different uh, uh, clinical pictures in terms of fractures. So uh, I want to speak from the beginning to the end for everybody to understand and then I hope that we have a nice discussion. Yeah. So the thing is, uh, this is the first case with no radial uh, deficits, 21 year old girl with a distal humerus uh, um, in the distal shaft with a transverse fracture. The thing is, I can do all of the patterns uh, of, of fractures uh, and this is, uh, uh, one thing that I, I, I want to show. So what to do, and the thing is, uh, I love anterior bridge plating. I do this with focus, passion, but still with scientific methods, and it works tremendously in my, in my hands. So this is the first message. Uh, this plate, well, I always uh, use a 12-hole plate uh, with two screws up, and two screws down. So there is a lot of discussion. A lot of people have been discussing with me, uh, but I am afraid of using two screws. Uh, I want to use three. And in my opinion, and in my team's opinion, and in Brazilian guys' opinion, this is a fallacy. This is a myth from the word mythology. Because with two up and two down, that's absolutely enough. In this case, the plate could be a little bit lower but it doesn't matter. As long as I can put two up and two down, that's absolutely enough. I'm gonna uh, show very challenging cases. So the thing is, what I want everybody to understand, this is the immediate full, full stop. So what about the incisions? Well, there is a way to perfectly, I repeat, to wonderfully position uh, the, the incisions, I'm going to show it, but what about the sizes? As a rule, I don't care about the sizes, but as a rule, the proximal incision in the last 10 years have been around three centimeters, two and a half, and the distal incision about three and a half, but for some, uh, I would say, uh, skin reasons that I don't understand and, and I don't care about it, this distal incision, it has a shrinkage with time in a way that it becomes very, 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 very small. Bahut Torah, and I'm gonna show it soon. So what I want people to understand is that there is a very important thing in this technique, which is something like what Shiva has said. Clinical healing precedes radiographical healing, and this is very important. Clinical healing precedes radiographical healing a lot, and I'm gonna show you beautiful examples. So when does the callus start? I would say literature is very clear from 12 to 16, but you can have less or you can have more. And 
I'm going to show both cases. And in my opinion, it depends on the age, because this is a biological technique in which you need a lot of biological response. So this girl, you see, with eight weeks, she has already a beautiful callus, but this is not, uh, this is not the, the average, okay? This is happening because she's very young, in my point of view, and with five weeks post-op, she was wonderful. And when you come to eight weeks, you have the starting callus, but uh, this is not the average. Okay, the average in my uh, in my uh, practice is exactly what literature says. It's uh, twelve to sixteen weeks to have hagiographical healing because clinical healing comes much first. So this is the post-op four months and people must understand that bone remodeling is something that takes months and years. And this is written in Rockwood, in Campbell and in Jupiter, uh, all of the classical books. So if you pick up this girl and you see uh, another image with eight months, it's gonna be, uh, I would say a much, a much more uh, nicer and uh, mature callus. The thing is that these are young patients, they have to take care of their lives and they come to me and they say, Dr. Sergio, I'm so nice. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to come here, Kafi Mechanati, and I just, uh, I wanna live my life. Uh, there are so many patients, so please discharge me. And then I discharged that girl on that day. So this is a beautiful view uh, post-op. And how was, uh, I, I would say, this is a beautiful callus. So these are the incisions, and I'm gonna talk about the incisions, how to proper place them in a second. But I told you there is a shrinkage process in the skin. I cannot explain why, but it doesn't matter to me because it's good. So see, she ended up having such a small incision, okay, and I'm going to talk about where to put the incisions in a minute. So what about the clinical results? Uh, I'm talking in the video, so let's uh, see and listen to my voice. Six months post-op, anterior bridge plate, operated 29 de December. Surgery 29 December 2016. Very small incision. You want to go boxing? No pain. She rides a bike. She rides a bike. She doesn't remember she has a plate. Tá bom? Então, é isso aí, né? Valeu, tchau. So the first message, you can do it in any pattern. I'm gonna uh, show other patterns. So how to, so now I'm gonna talk about the technique and then I'm gonna show three other uh, very nice cases in different patterns and, and ages. So you have to draw the incisions for them to be in perfect position and very small. So how am I gonna dr uh, draw the incisions? So this is a very old picture, uh, just for uh, pedagogical purposes. This is a 10 hole, but for many years I only uh, use 12. And what you must understand, you are looking to this and looking to the CR, the image intensifier all of the time with uh, traction. And I don't have this image, but imagine you have a reduced fracture uh, in C-arm, just like this X-ray with a very good reduction. So what do I do? When it's a mid shaft, I can put the middle of the plate in the focus. So what do I do? I pick up marking pen and I mark on the skin, the upper part of, of the plate 
and the interval between the second and the third screw and the same thing inferiorly the inferior part of the plate and uh, the, the second to the third screw from down to up and I mark it on the skin I'm going to show it and this is going to be the upper and the, uh, the superior and the lower uh, uh, limit of my incision. So I pass this line and I pass this line between the second, the third, and this is gonna be my incision, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing uh, inferiorly and this is gonna be my incision. So, where do I put them from medial to lateral? Well, the upper is easy. It's in the delta pack line. You don't have to worry about the musculocutaneous nerve. A lot of people ask me, this is a fallacy because you don't see it. I, I uh, say it again, I, I repeat and I uh, quote, it's not the problem. The problem is the radial nerve. And I'm gonna show the solution too. Where do I put my lateral incision? It's never in the middle. I don't split the biceps. I put it lateral to the biceps with the long head of the triceps because what do I want? So this is where I put my incision exactly in this place because I have to see the radial nerve and I'm gonna talk about it a lot. So what about the sequence of the surgery? I do both incisions and I connect them. From inferior, uh, the inferior to superior, superior to inferior, it doesn't matter. I prefer from uh, the upper to the lower incision, always with traction. Without, without traction, the surgery is worse than coronavirus. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very serious about that. You must always have uh, traction and three people and I'm going to tell you why. So with which hole do I start? I always start with the upper hole of the inferior part and why? Because I do so many difficult cases and these style cases that I have to have a perfect position of this hole. So I learned it to do like this, not in any book in my mind and it works wonderfully. So this is my first perforation which can be done through the plate or uh, freehand without the, the plate. It doesn't matter. And after that, I introduce the plate. The, the traction is all of the time with semi-flexion. There is one guy that is always doing this. He's there only for traction. And I put a screw in that hole partially uh, uh, screw. This is a very key point. And after that, I'm going to check reduction under C arm, always with uh, traction in semi flexion. There's someone doing this all of the time. Constant uh, traction, this is a must. And then I'm going to see the position to drill the upper hole under C arm guidance with uh, traction all of the time. Uh, I use it, uh, the distal hole from the upper part. So I put that screw partially screwed. So both screws now, they are partially screws because with this situation, I can adjust Algus. So I just Varus and Valgus and then I lock. So why is three people? One Hello, we have lost your voice. Please keep the guidance. He's adjusting the varus and valgus and holds with both hands. And a third surgeon locks the two screws. So we need six hands to do this technique. In my, uh, this is something that is absolutely clear for us. Two people is a mess, is a, a tragedy, is catastrophical. Catas you cannot do this, it's catastrophic. In my opinion, it's impossible. A first one to the traction with two hands. A second one with two hands, clinical and C-arm guidance to adjust varus and valgus. And a third one with both hands to lock 
the upper screw, the inferior screw, and then it's done. And you have to, to, to put one more and one more, uh, two up and two down. So what about the radial nerve? The thing is, you will always have a homan medially, okay? Always under uh, traction. And the thing is, do I want to see it? Yes, but sometimes I find it and sometimes I don't. And it doesn't matter because pay attention to the rule. A nerve that you don't see is a nerve that doesn't exist. I'm gonna say it again. A nerve you don't see is a nerve that doesn't exist. So, but I need to have space. I need to have space to work. So that is traction, a home immediately. Try to avoid the home and laterally, literally is, is uh, uh, clear, not to damage the radial nerve, but sometimes I do it with a lot of delicacy. But before that, try to have space. A home and medially, a farabe for a lung and back, uh, taking a, a lot of care to, uh, uh, with the radial nerve. So the biceps and the brachialis are being retracted with the medial homan, the traction is there. The lateral part, the long head of the triceps is, is being uh, retracted with a farabef or a lung and back. If you have space, wonderful. But, and you must use an aspirator because it bleeds a lot in that part. It doesn't bleed in the upper part, it bleeds a lot in the inferior part. But if you don't have space, this is my personal homan, which is nothing but a long artery forceps. Okay, this is Dr. Sergio's lateral homan. Everybody has this, it's not a small one, it's a bigger one. And in my mind, it damages the radial nerve much less. So this is one, one uh, picture, extremely hefty, obese lady. I'm seeing the radial nerve in the end. Whenever I end the surgery, I try to see the nerve to see that it's okay. And I uh, close the, the skin. This is another image of the radial nerve. You don't have to fear the nerve. You have to respect it. It's completely different. I learned this in the United States, a fellowship. Uh, with Snyder, with Snyder, uh, and people taught me that it changed my mind. is a game changer. This is the other an, another case. This is another case. A left, uh, a, a left uh, shoulder uh, and an arm, and in the end of the surgery, many times the nerve is very close to the inferior part of the plate. It doesn't matter. This is another case, and so on and so on. So the thing is, how far can we go? How distal can we go? The answer is we can go extremely distal when you, I don't like to use the word master, but when you do it in a very uh, mature level. So let me show you this case. A, a very, very fat lady, obese, 23-year-old uh, lady, the vast majority of the, uh, of the younger surgeons they would do a posterior uh, uh, plating with a very big incision. It's academically never wrong. What about managing this conservatively? Uh, you can do this, but it's very difficult. It's painful. Uh, the plaster, the cast can damage the skin. I have seen catastrophic scenarios in obese patients in the axilla, okay? I have seen one case of a cellulitis infection on the dermis below the skin, it was a tragedy. And in, in obese patients, it's a mess. It's very difficult to control the virus, the valgus, and you have a lot of issues with elbow stiffness. So as long as I can put two up and two down, I'm happy, it's, it's enough. I have space one here for one, I have space for two, and there is absolutely space and no place for any mistake. So this is, in my opinion, something for people with a lot of experience. Another trick, I, I know it's uh, difficult to go to the radiology department. I did it with my hands uh, to have a perfect lateral view in order to see, can I put one? Yes. Can I put two? Yes. So I can do a bridge uh, uh, plate, no space for any mistakes.
Naveen, he lost. Yes. Hello, your voice has gone, sir. Can I stop your video? It's then about we'll get... I, I, I was afraid about impingement of the coronoid on the on, on the uh, on the plate. Excuse me. Yeah, I stop video only to get good bandwidth. You can speak. Can I speak? Yeah, you can speak. Okay. So yeah. the thing is, so the thing is, I was thinking about impingement of the the biceps uh, and the the coronoid, and it, it doesn't happen. So there is no problem of putting the plate so low. I'm gonna show you the final clinical result. As long as I can put two up and two down, I'm happy. A wonderful reduction one week post op. So how how do I conduct these cases? Pay attention, everybody. Uh, we want uh, immediate motion, but I don't want to stress my my construction. Whenever you, we are we are in surgery, we see that with flexion the deformity forces are much less. So having that in mind, this is a personal idea. I keep this these patients to avoid elbow stiffness in a cuff and color. It costs ten rupees. Super. Uh, easy to get, extremely cheap. A cuff and collar only allowing flexion from 90 to 130, 140, all of the day, many times a day, to avoid elbow stiffness. It works fantastically in my hands. What about seven weeks? You have no callus, but the clinical picture is very nice. I'm going to show it in the next case because People must understand clinical healing precedes radiographical healing. You must never forget the clinical healing comes much faster than radiographical healing. So see this 11 weeks, a beautiful callus is formating posteriorly, but you have nothing in the AP. See the image on the left side between the segmental fracture medially and the, the, the metaphysis, you have nothing. The patient is doing fine. Sergio, do we have a problem? No, no, you just have to wait because when you see the patient with 16 weeks, see the image on the right side, it's lovely. And this bone is gonna remodel for one year, two years, it's written on Rockwood, Campbell, Jupiter, and many other books. Uh, uh, and many others because remodeling is a process that goes on. If you see this with 16, is a scalus formation posteriorly, and I like to see these patients for a lot of time uh, to document the, I would say, the radiographical healing, but uh, 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 clinically it's done. I'm going to show you guys. So you see 20 weeks See on the right side, lovely mature callus is formating. And if you see this in more uh, two months, it's going to be better. More five months is going to be better. But these patients, this lady, she said to me that day, I am perfect. I'm going to show you now. I have a small baby. My husband, he works a lot. It's difficult to come here. Please discharge me. She's very nice. So I did it. And a lovely image on the left view. And this is going to remodel from from still a lot of time. So see the size of the, see the size of the arm, see the very small incisions, in my opinion, perfectly uh, positioned, okay, uh, okay. And I dare to say, I repeat, I dare to say that posterior incision, not only a big gigantic damage to soft tissue, never academically wrong, but the incision would be, in my opinion, and I'm quite sure, at least as long as the, uh, the uh, uh, length of the connection between the upper and the inferior or much bigger, much longer. So I consider this, to be very honest, a revolution. Fat patient obese, minimally invasive, very small incision. People say it's percutaneous. It's not percutaneous, is minimally invasive, and in my opinion, maximally resolutive. So let's see the video, five months, when she said, please discharge me. Just listen to my voice now. This is the distal incision, the distal scar. This is the proximal scar.
very, very small, very uh, close to the fossa. Very good external rotation. Perfect internal rotation. Full shoulder ele elevation. She's smiling. This is what we want in the end of the day, a happy patient. But can we go more far? The answer is yes, as long as you have a lot of experience with that. I have two cases like this one. I'm going to show you this one and another one uh, so far. Uh, and everybody will say, Sergio, you are absolutely crazy to do this in such a distal case. But the thing is, when you do this in a mature level and you understand that this distal part of the humerus is completely different from the upper part. The humeral head have a soft bone, is what we call in the shoulder universe, the eggshell. But this bone is extremely hard. So if you don't have any space for a mistake, and this was a very strong man going to the gym five times in the week. So uh, I did it. I know it sounds a little bit scary, but I trust this so much. Uh, there is a lot of bleeding. This is metaphysical area. Uh, it heals fast. Uh, I keep this guy, this guy, two weeks with a cuff and collar, uh, and uh, collar, uh, just doing this to avoid elbow stiffness. You are gonna see the final result. This is the immediate full stop. Very, very, very difficult to position the screws, but I, I knew I would do it. Uh, and this is three weeks, absolutely nothing in terms of callus. This is super important now. Clinical healing precedes radiographical healing. Clinical healing precedes radiographical healing. Basically nothing radiographically, clinical healing precedes. So let's see the boy, seven weeks. Attention everybody. See, see his biceps. He's doing physio. He's doing physical therapy. Ok, cara. Dobra tudo. Dica. Faz um joia. Nothing with the radial nerve. Ok? And then you come to me and you say, Sergio, but what about bone healing? The answer is you just have to wait. See this? Three months after that, Lovely callus because radiographical healing comes much uh, much after the clinical healing. Okay, so this is the final callus. Uh, I discharged this guy that day, December 15, uh, uh, 2016. But how is this guy clinically at that moment? Let's see. He's doing now push-ups. Just want to highlight that uh, it took me a lot of time to prepare this lecture and I wanted to cover the face of the patient. This is an international presentation, but I am in 
Brazil and according to Federal Council of Medicine, I can show that in Brazil, of course, Brazilian Federal Council of Medicine, I can show the face of the patient as long as I am doing pedagogical presentation. So I am under the laws of my, my country uh, from the maximum uh, medical council. I just wanna highlight that. But there is another uh, thing, and this is my last case and I'm coming to conclusions. A lot of people have been discussing with me, Deepak Sutar, which is here, has discussed this with me countless times. How far can we go in terms of old people, older or elders? The thing is, one, of, uh, one thing that I have been doing is I have been trying to do this uh, in older patients. My record so far is a 70, 70 guy, but this is a 68 year old lady. So this is my last case. This is something, a short oblique, a mid shaft, a wonderful indication. Shiva would do it uh, with a, a, an AO, of course, and many other guys, but uh, we, we did an AVP, of course. And this is another thing that I wanna show. Sergio, how much contact do you need to have in these basically transverse cases? I don't have the answer, mathematically speaking, but as long as I have minimal contact, this is enough. I have been seeing this for almost 15 years. So this is the radial nerve. And this is two weeks post-op. And this is seven weeks in which you have nothing. And in my practice, older patients, it takes much more time for you to have radiographical healing. But clinical healing comes much, much faster. So this is almost a 70, 70 year old lady. I see basically no callus here. And I started to see callus 15 weeks, which is not against the literature because radiographical callus comes average from 12 to 16. But if you see the image on the right, I see nothing. But how is this lady clinically speaking? I'm gonna say it again. I've been saying this for 12 years in India Art. Clinical healing precedes radiographical healing. Let's see the lady, there's no sound here. So uh, a wonderful external rotation. Still, I'm gonna show you difficulty for internal rotation. This has nothing to do uh, with, uh, you see here a little pain. This has nothing to do with fracture, only the shoulder, very good uh, forward elevation. Let's see the size of this, the scars. As I have said, there is a phenomena in which you have a shrinkage of the skin. Uh, so it's very short, okay, very small. Uh, this is again uh, in delta pec line. There is no problem with the musculocutaneous nerve. This is a myth from the word mythology. It's not there. And she's very happy, absolutely no problem. Uh, issues with radial nerve. This is what we want, happy patient in the end of the day. But when will callus come? You see, uh, on the AP, not much, but if you follow these patients, the callus started to appear after six, six months. But if you keep on following her, a lovely callus, eight months uh, on left view. And then what about nine months? Now we have Callus and callus and callus and callus. And if you keep on following these patients, the callus will get better because this is Rockwood, Campbell, Jupiter. Remodeling takes months and uh, years to happen. So this is the last view. I discharged her on that day. Proximal incision, distal incision. And how was the lady, 68-year-old lady? Where's the most seen? Complete shoulder elevation. Volta, volta. Põe as duas as duas mãos aqui, aqui assim, isso. Roda lá para fora as duas. Full external isso. rotation, and volta still aí. I'm gonna show some pain in the shoulder Põe for internal rotation. The other one is fine. Põe a mão direita. Okay. Still some difficulty. This is because of the shoulder, volta. not of the fracture. This is the final scar at that moment. Very small, very small. 
Uh, this is the proximal scar. What about the elbow? It's absolutely okay. The radial nerve is okay. This is, this is what I want in, in the end of the day. Happy patient. Snyder says, if the patient is happy, I'm, I'm happy. If the patient is happy, I'm happy. So I have four take home messages and then I'm going to finish. I can do ABP in any, and I repeat, any pattern of humeral fractures. And I'm talking about diaphyseal fractures in any pattern, proximal metaphyseal diaphyseal fractures and distal metaphyseal diaphyseal fractures. I'm not talking ab about proximal humerus fractures. I'm not, I'm not talking about supracondylians. But as long as I can put two up and two down for me, that's enough. For my team, that's absolutely enough. Why do I use take home message to 12 hole, long, narrow, big fragments, uh, 4.52 is enough. This is, a, I would say, established thing here in my, my hospital, my team. And what about locked screws? There is no uh, a paper, if there is, I'm not aware of comparing locked with non-locked, but we have a consensus here that locket would make the, uh, the construction quite stiff in a way that, that would impede a good healing. Uh, maybe we are wrong, but this is a sensation. And I'm so happy with the CP that I'm, I'm keeping it. And another thing, from an economical point of view, I work in a, a good public hospitals, but we have financial issues as, every, as any uh, public hospital in, in this planet. So the locket screws, they are much more uh, expensive. So the medical decision fits uh, the economical decision and everything becomes fine uh, in this uh, point of view. So what about the musculocutaneous nerve? Many guys have been asking me last three, uh, last 10 years or more, don't worry. I can promise you it's not there. You have to worry about the radio nerve. Last take home message. What about the radio nerve? Respect, don't fear. I learned this in France, game changer in my mind. Any nerve, respect. I respect it a lot. I don't fear it. Very delicate movements. When I'm doing the, uh, the distal incision and the distal fixation, I have the sensation I am operating in slow motion because I am extremely delicate. This is an extremely delicate surgery to be done in three people, six hands, and it use a long curved artery forceps as a hormone to avoid damage to the uh, radial nerve. So I'm very happy to be here. It's an honor to be here. This is my email, and I invite all of the audience who have interest, interest in shoulder, arthroscopy, physiopathology, uh, clinics, and trauma to follow me in my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. And that's it. I'm finished. So, my friends, I hope you like it. This nice uh, lecture about ABP humeral anterior bridge plate and I hope you like it. Please subscribe, show it to your friends, leave your comment, give us your thumbs up. See you in the next video and as Dr. Sergio loves to say, never stop flying. See you my friends.